Okay, so the case is all prepped. Um, as far as prepping the case, uh, you know, there will be a little box inside the hard drive cage here with all the components and stuff. And in that you will find uh, little standouts that look just like these. The little gold pieces that are set inside here. One, two, three, and they, there's usually about nine of them depending on the case. Sometimes there's a center one that's not there. It's a little pin that sits into the motherboard itself to give it some stability. So you want to start off uh, by putting these standoffs in depending on your motherboard. You can take a look at it and uh, let me zoom in a little bit here for you. These little markers here on the corner, right here, here, and another one down here and there will be uh, several rows of them that you know go along the motherboard that will match up with the standoffs inside of the case sorry I'm trying to get this set up so what you wanna where I usually start off is installing the motherboard get you a good view here so once the standoffs are in Take our motherboard. Ah, first things first, the in out shield for the back. And that will just get popped right in to the back side of the case, right here, and you'll hear it click in. in there. Okay, she's in. So once your uh, in-out shield is put in, all the in and out for your motherboard will line right up with it. Sometimes you need to give it a nice little gentle shove uh, to fit it right into the shield that's in the back of the PC. Just to make sure it's lined up and set in there properly so it aligns with the uh, standoffs. Once that's all set, you can see that uh, it'll be lined up with the standoffs on the inside and just take our screws and put them right through the holes of the motherboard into the standoff. I mean, personally, I like to use a screwdriver with a magnetic tip just because uh, things drop. That's the way it goes it's a little bit easier on yourself. Now when actually putting the screws in, don't tighten them up all the way as you're going through. Just like doing the uh, tires on your car with, for the lug nuts. You don't want to tighten them all the way all at once. Just get them all started and then go through and tighten them up as you go kitty corner. Once these are uh, done screwed in, I will uh, get back to it. Okay, all the, uh, the screws for the motherboard have been tightened around, all the way around. Uh, after the motherboard is in place, I like to move on to the power supply. Which, this is our hybrid modular power supply. Um, there is a blue LED light in it. Uh, there's a switch on the back not only turn it on and off, but an, also another switch uh, just for the light itself, which is a nice feature. So, let's get this bundle out of here. 
This is what I mean by a hybrid modular. The two main cables come off the back, are attached to it. This is your, the larger one is your main 24 pin that goes to the uh, main power for the motherboard and then the other extra two. The rest of them, you attach all the rest of the ones that you need just to the ends of them instead of having all these hang all the way off, you know, to the, if you don't need them, you just don't connect them, tie them off, saves a little bit of room in the case. So, we'll get this in. And the power supply just fits right down in the bottom here. So. power supply just attaches right through the back with four screws right in through the holes as you can see. Again, you don't want to over tighten them, just keep them nice and snug. Okay, so now the power supply is in. So thus far, we've got the uh, motherboard and power supply in place. Uh, from here, I'll put the, uh, the CD drive, which will go right into the, the base here, and then the hard drive will go right into the base here, And which is another nice feature of this case. Um, it has a hot swappable. If you ever feel like putting a solid state drive in, which is really nice these days, it goes right inside of this bracket instead of having to find an extra mounting plate for it. And that just has two little clips on it and slides right back in, so that's pretty easy. But the regular hard drive still, um, there's just a couple of little rails. These rails here just plug right into the uh, uh, to the sides of the hard drive, and when they sit on it, you just slide it right in. with the uh, Western Digital because they're usually pretty reliable hard drives and New Egg usually has pretty decent parts on them. So, 
as I said, the uh, always make sure the back of the uh, the hard drive is facing the back side of the case. So these just fit right into the little holes where the screws would go. And then that slides right into place in your hard drive bay. And that's it. You ever want to take it out, just push the two clips together, pull it. Be aware of dropping stuff though. <laughs> slots you want to use for the uh, front bezel of the case. These ones are pretty nice, they pop out pretty easy. Just give a little push on it and come right out. And then with this case, These little holes here and here just get little thumb screws on either side and that's what holds the CD drive in. So we'll get those in place. screws are turned in. That's it for installing the uh, CD drive and hard drive except for connecting it to the motherboard which we will get to later. We're going to move on to the, uh, the installation of the processor, which goes right into this socket right here. Um, the installation of the processor itself is pretty easy. You just pull up on the little bar, and that'll actually push the socket itself back so you're able to fit the processor into it. This is the six core processor. I have the uh, the eight core processor in my other computer. Love it. Absolutely love it. This is the FX 6100. And when opening these, always be sure to try and grab it from the sides, not from the pins underneath. Uh, you always want to check to make sure if you hold it you know, parallel to yourself, just check for any uh, bent pins or anything like that just to make sure uh, there wasn't a problem with the shipping or anything. And on the processor, there's a little gold tab. Let's see it right here on the corner. And on the, uh, the socket for the motherboard, you'll see a little arrow right in the corner of it and that indicates where the yellow tab for your processor goes. With the bar up, 
take it and just drop it right into place. Uh, it doesn't really take any pressure to get it in there. Just give it a nice little jiggle back and forth to make sure that it's seated properly. Push the bar down and you'll hear it click in place. And that's it for the actual installation of the process. We still have to put on the, uh, the CPU cooler and the thermal paste, which we will do right now. So, um, any of the, uh, the coolers, the stock coolers, may come with thermal paste pre-applied to it. Let's see if this one does. taken off so what I have here is Arctic Silver 5 um, which is a uh, pretty good quality thermal paste so what I'll do is just apply that to the copper rim here and uh, and to the processor and I actually found that a makeup brush yes a makeup brush one of the foam ones works very well for keeping any air bubbles out of it so uh, we'll get to that small bead that are on the processor. Once you start spreading it out, you know, you'll be able to get a uh, better idea. You want to make sure that there are not any air bubbles between it, which is why I use the brush. get the, uh, the thermal paste off you want to use isopropyl alcohol and uh, you know just a co cotton swab or something of that nature and it'll, uh, it'll take it right off if you decide to put on aftermarket cooling or anything like that. So the thermal paste is to, uh, when the computer is running, the processor will give off heat. The thermal paste will help dissipate the heat evenly over the processor and into the cooler. That's what it should look like once you're done applying the thermal paste. Now I'll go ahead and add a little extra thermal paste just to the copper piece of the cooler itself. And then same thing, just working from the outside edges in. I 
if you get a little bit over the edges don't be too concerned just because obviously the copper piece is circular process are square but it'll still sit over the whole edge of this but as as the thermal paste heats up it will spread out a little bit that's why you don't want to go too heavy because it you know you just don't want it dripping off of it you still want it to make good contact now, there is arctic silver 7 it's a little bit more expensive uh, if, if you're doing serious overclocking I would recommend getting it and unless you're going to go with water cooling that's a whole different story we won't cover that today so now that that's applied we can go ahead and apply the cooler and how the cooler works it has a little clip on either side of it it has a little clip on either side and a little thumb screw here. You're going to take it, and there's little clips on either side of the processor. Hook the, the side without the thumb tab on it. Hook that on first. Slide the other side over it. And when you push over on the thumb screw, it'll lock itself right in place. That's it, locked right into place. You can move it a little bit. You really don't want to force it too much, though, just to make sure that it's clipped on properly. And then this is the, uh, the power for the fan on it. And <clears throat> right above the processor on the motherboard. right here, sorry for the quality, is a little three pin. Oh, the focus on this is horrible, sorry. There's a little three pin here that that attaches to. CPU fan block right above the pin set. Okay. So, there's that. This is our RAM. Uh, some of the motherboards will have locking features for the RAM. Make sure that they're open. You just push out on them. For the one that we're going to be using, we're going to start off with 4 gigs. This is a really good quality RAM though, so. And then there's a little notch in the RAM itself that lines up with the notch right there. So we're using just one stick for now, so just use the first slot closest to the processor and always work your way out. properly just give a little push down you'll hear it click right in. That's it. There's installing the RAM. Uh, let's see. From here um, I suppose we'll start installing fans. Once I get the fans all set up we'll get back to it. 